talk about the admission notes and progress notes and how to properly claim a bill of a level two or a level three. This is going to be important for practicing hospitalists and for residents to get to know what's going to happen once you land a job as a hospitalist after graduation. So these cards, these flashcards, um, I made them to, to help with this type of guidance. Um, it has guidance on 99233, 99232, 99222, and 99223 as the most common codes that hospitalists use. And since 2023, all the, the rules and compliance factors have been modified. Now, this, all this information is here in these cards. Also, on the criteria for a hospitalist to be on a 99291 note, how to do a same-day discharge 99236 and 99235, and how to properly be for a 99238 and 99239 codes at the end, it gives you a summary of all the codes with the times um, if you choose to do it um, based on time. Now, I, I would like you guys, or well, the purpose of this video is for you to learn to code or to build based on components. Now, you can also add time at the end uh, if that's a practice in your medical group, but for, for proper good practice for or communication between physicians is um, appropriate to do it with all the elements. Okay, so <clears throat> for the level three, um, the same card applies for the admission note and the progress note because all these um, requirements have been modified starting in January 2023. So forget about all that you learned before, all that you learned in medical school, residency up to this year because all this has changed. So now, when we do a progress note or an admission note, the requirements of history or subjective part only ask you for a relevant clinical information. And the same on the physical exam, you just have to provide relevant clinical information. So what does that mean? Does that mean that you don't need to do a history or a physical exam? No, because God doesn't want that, but if your note has to be taken to court and you only document in your history a patient came with chest pain and you omit the OPQRST, for example, then that could be um, a base to, for you to lose a malpractice case. Same with the physical exam. If you missed an obvious infection, wound infection, or you missed an obvious induration that could mean, I don't know, uh, necrotizing fasciitis, then that will be um, a losing point for you. So these modifications are not saying don't do a proper history of physical exam. They are saying do something that's relevant for the patient's current visit. So uh, we'll leave that part to you, but in my practice, I still do a very thorough history and a very thorough um, assessment of the physical exam. Now, the important thing, the important part now is going to be on the medical decision making. And so pay attention to this part. How, how is this? How are we going to ensure that our node has the, the parts that make it a 99233? Because our employers want us to build the highest possible. And reality is that we do the mental work and reality is that our patients are sick because otherwise, why would you have a patient admitted into a hospital if your patient is not sick with something that is either life-threatening or is affecting the proper function of an organ or the possibility of losing a limb? So if you think about that, the, the potential is there. You just have to know what makes it a level three and how to tweak your note to make it like that. Now, the many physicians will, will argue, uh, no, I don't need to do that. I just need to, to say the truth of the case. And this patient has um, necrotizing fasciitis, needs surgery, needs antibiotics, needs to stay in the ICU. That's all I need to say. Why do I need to explain my mind on the importance of um, every two hours BMP or every two hours physical examination by the nursing staff or 
um, the use of vasopressor support on this patient? Why do I need to explain my mind? Well, if your node ends up in an audit and you have billed for a 9 to 3 or 9 and 2 to 3, the highest level available, um, then you may lose that claim. And the, the repercussions of that, I don't know because I never have been involved in an audit. So um, I just want to, to practice the base in the way that uh, Medicare suggests us to practice. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. So let's start with uh, breaking down these medical decision-making levels and assessments. So for a 9 and 2, 2 3 and a 9 and 2, 3, 3, the level 3 nodes, we need a high MDL level. And the MDM, to, to create an MDM level, you need to um, compose this node with a complexity case, data, and a statement that says that this patient is a high risk patient. So each of them have a specific, a specific um, qualification. So let's start that by saying that to, for you to meet a high MDM level, you only need to hit two of these three components. So in your note, you just have to make sure you have two out of these three. And the easiest combination for you to do this is here in complexity and risk. So you have to make sure that the patient is complex and that you make a statement of high risk. Why not data? Because people think that by creating a node with embedded EKG, with embedded lab results of the day, with embedded chest X-ray of the day, or any, any auto population of imaging lab results, it means that you already revised and considered these results into your note, but it's not. For Medicare and auditors, the only way that they have to prove that you independently assess these results is by you making that um, statement in your note. So if you assess a CVC, I independently assess the patient medical laboratory results of the day, and it is significant for hyponatremia, which has not improved despite uh, gentle hydration with NS. See, now the, the problem with using data is that many people will, many people copy paste their notes and by thinking that, oh, the day prior, someone said, I independently analyzed the lab results and there's no, no, um, no changes it means that you already did um, a proper assessment, a, a proper statement that meets this criteria, but it's not. Because saying that nothing has changed immediately downgrades your note from the level three to the level two or the level one. And it means that this patient is ready for discharge, even if in the case it's not. And I know it happens many times because I see these copy paste patterns. And I know you're taking care of a very very sick patient, but your notes don't, don't show that. So for me, the, the easiest combinations come in complexity and the higher risk statement. So for complexity, you need to either meet the either one of these two. So you can be treating a patient with one or more chronic illnesses with severe exacerbation or progression. For example, COPD, CHF, the most common things that we treat. If it's a patient that is admitted for acute COPD exacerbation, what makes it severe? You know what makes it severe? Your statement that this is a severe COPD exacerbation. That's it. You making that statement may be, may be specifying why you think that's the case because the patient has hypoxia. 90% of our patients that we admit with COPD exacerbation have a degree of hypoxia that is beyond their baseline. So just by you saying that this patient has a severe COPD exacerbation based on increased oxygen requirements beyond baseline, you are creating 
not only the assessment, the statement, but you're giving the supporting information. So someone, some auditor will come and say, oh, check, it's complex, it's high. Uh, or you could be describing, as it says here, you could be describing an acute illness or injury that poses a threat to life or bodily function in the near term. For example, the most common ones, a patient that needs to be admitted to rule out and STEMI with uh, elevation of troponin in the emergency department. So you, your assessment is suspected and STEMI based on history of recent chest pain and a mild elevation of troponin, which correlates with uh, a possible underlying type one or type two myocardial infarction. So just by saying, by, by dictating your mind in your note, you can meet the complexity part. So it's important that we, we see that you have to, nowadays, starting this year, you have to dictate your mind because the validity of your note comes from this assessment and plan part. Um, uh, these pointers here, coders cannot determine the severity unless it's indicated by a physician. Most of these coders, the ones uh, that revise your notes, the, the ones that um, are in charge of, of an audit, they're not doctors, they're not even nurses. They just have a list of criteria that your note has to meet for you to be compliant. So you are the only one that can make that determination of severity. Um, the documentation, matters to sustain these two paths. So the more you add to, to the body of your assessment and plan, the more uh, meat <coughs> this note has to validate its level. Um, so that is complexity. Very simple for a 99233. For high risk mor morbidity, what is necessary? Again, it's necessary that you speak out your mind and make a statement <coughs> of the severity and why this is needed. For example, let's, um, let's say um, here, a decision regarding emergency major surgery. What makes the, what makes criteria for, for me to say what is emergency, what is urgent, what is major, what is minor. Nothing else than your statement with a proper explanation. For example, let's say we have a patient that has an end STEMI and you document in your note that we have decided that this patient has a high risk for for worsening of his condition, and we have, um, I don't know, um, decided to go for a left heart catheterization in an emergency, in an emergent basis. That's enough. Or we have decided that this patient is appropriate to undergo a total hip arthroplasty to avoid complications such as the development of uh, pressure ulcers or um, DVTs from immobility. Just by saying what you already know, you are you are supporting your decision to to be for a higher level. Um, also, if in your note you have said today, for example, um, this patient has a severe elevation of troponin, we suggest that this patient goes for a left heart catheterization. However, we had a family meeting and the family has decided to pursue comfort care only due to his age and frailty. So we have decided not to go for the left heart cut. That's enough. That's enough to say this is a high risk mor morbidity patient. The use of parental control substances, the use of vasopressor therapy, uh, anything that requires intensive monitoring and not necessarily based on lab results like uh, vancomycin trough or um, any levels for um, any medication, but it could be um, 
physical assessment. It could be um, response assessment on therapy, like uh, basal pressure support and how it how it reflects on, on pressure levels. So just by you saying in, in your note, why are you using this medication and how are you planning to follow up on its efficacy? You're meeting this criteria, especially if you're using IV medications, uh, um, vasopressors, um, antiarrhythmics, uh, opioids, IV opioids, or you're, you're dealing with a patient with um, high requirements of opioid medications. Now, if you want to be more thorough and more complete when creating your notes, then you may need to look into the analyzed data. So for the data, and I like to do it, I like to, to add data. I created my own template with all these pointers saying, uh, records from referring PCP reviewed. What does that mean? It means that you have um, read, summarized, used any records that came with this patient from 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 the field from his primary care doctor's office from from his referring a sniff so it could be records from paramedics review it could be records from ER physician review anyone that is not a doctor within your group within your hospitalist group. It could be the ER physician, like the EMTs, the, the nurses at the SNF. So I make sure that I, on my admission note, I, I um, enter this statement or on my progress note, if there is any new data, any new information that comes, I make sure that I just say records from, from outside hospital were reviewed and I add something that strikes me the most, like um, the patient has an underlying history of CAD with a recent uh, cardiac catheterization that shows uh, multivessel disease. Um, something, because it just can be just very, very um, general. It has to show that there has been some interpretation of data. Um, ordering a test or review of results. Um, it cannot be both, it has to be one. So you either um, get a point from from reviewing the results or from ordering the test. So it could be um, the CMP test today. And uh, remember, the CMP has multiple multiple results. So whatever is within the CMP or the BMP um, counts as just one point. Now the CMP is different than the CVC. So then you have two points. Um, but that's why analyzing data or, or trying to meet the criteria based on data is more complex or more complicated than using the other two. So you have the pointers here. Um, another good thing is that on my admission note, I like to say, how did I obtain the, the HPI? And it could be from, from the patient or it could be from husband, wife, any witness, any nurse at the nursing home. Um, you just have to document from whom you obtain this information and why. Why? Because this count as the history being obtained from a different source or an independent source. And it counts as an extra effort to obtain the most accurate data to, to create a, um, a history or a progress note. Then um, there's that, that uh, data one, and you have to meet uh, two out of these three data to, to comply with the analyzed data. So um, interpretation of tests performed by another physician. This is uh, another point that people believe that just by embedding their x-ray results in your note, it counts as um, reviewed and it doesn't. So you have to make the, um, the statement that independent interpretation of a chest x-ray, uh, CT scan, Lex scan, MRI or a stress test was performed and is significant for acute myocardial infarction, acute CVA. It just needs to say that you independently review and interpreted this result. And data three is discussion of management uh, or discussion of test results with another physician. And, and this is what we do every day. We, we talk to, to any consultants and 
if I did tell you, no, I want to use uh, augmenting for seven days at this charge because of increased uh, resistance and um, blah, blah, blah. So then you just document that. I discussed this patient with uh, infectious disease consultant. We have agreed to use augmenting uh, for seven more days at time of discharge based on these uh, recommendations, which is different than the common and popular infectious disease recommendations appreciated. That doesn't mean anything, and it's, people keep using them, and that doesn't mean anything. You don't obtain any points, you don't obtain any, any value to your node by saying that. It doesn't cover you in any aspect. So for us, for the new generation of doctors that are going to use these, these new rules, just change that practice. It doesn't mean much for your node. The same with um, this statement of uh, further management as per hospital course, that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't change things, that doesn't give you any pointers. It's just fluff on your note. So that is it. Um, it's very simple. Once you, once you get a, a good hold of this, um, this information and once you have made changes on your templates, on your, um, on your notes, then this becomes super easy and you will see how, how this is something that you, you will be able to substantiate with, with your dictation and it becomes very fast. So um, if you want to buy this, the link to the Etsy store where I have this, um, this card is down there in the comments. And thank you very much. And I believe um, hospitals will, hospitalists will benefit of this. Uh, residents and interns will, be, will benefit of this because it also gives you some guidance on what does your supervising physician wants you to document or how or even why. So many, so many interns, residents believe that um, if I know this, why do I need to explain this? Then this is why you need to explain because physicians build, practicing physicians build um, based on this. They get RBU points, they get uh, performance, they get uh, productivity bonuses based on this. And the more higher levels that you obtain, the more bonuses you get, the more uh, pro productive you are. Um, but also, in, in, in all honesty, this is a good way to, to ensure that you're not missing things that could help you when um, a legal situation arises, because this is what lawyers are going to start looking on. They're going to start looking that, um, that you provided this, this information, that um, a proper physical examination was done, a proper HPI was done, and why, why do you say this patient um, die if he is so stable or he is so, so simple as compared to, oh, this patient died because he's so sick. This, this physician documented that he's severely sick from the beginning. And so it could make a difference on, on any aspects of medicine. Most importantly, it's good uh, medical practice. So thank you very much and stay tuned for another video.